Hello dear friends again and welcome. Welcome to the drawing part of my presentation. Today we will be drawing something called um, where I will be explaining to you how we can combine two different algorithms, at least they seem different, but they both, combining both of them together will be a powerful combination and I would be happy to lead you in this discovery. For this we will need either a um, uh, circular, you know, uh, something that you can make a circle with, or I can also offer you, you can just print out a paper that will make a circle like this, okay? What I would like to do now is I'm going to show you and explain to you how to draw this algorithm, and I will not be dwelling as much on the um, you know, the coaching part, because that really requires much more time than the 50 or 55 minutes allotted for the session. But number one thing I would tell you is whenever we draw neurographics, we always set a topic. I call it the quest. What is your quest today? What are you looking for? What would you like to achieve today? And that's what we're going to draw, okay? So first thing we do is we're taking a piece of paper, the paper you would like to draw on, and using a circle, we're going to make a circle. Now, it's important to note, the circle we're making, it's not going to cover the whole page, no. It's going to be exactly like this. You see, it covers some part of the page, but there is a lot of space on the sides for you to expand on. And that's an important part of our, of our session today, of our project for today. We will learn how to expand, but do it in a right, in your graphic way. You know, in a way that will help you to expand your horizons and expand yourself so you can go to the goal that you're setting for yourself. So this is the circle I'm making now. You will probably not be able to see it as clearly, but no fear. Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my marker. I'm using green marker today, and I will be using the marker to draw this outline that I used the circular for before. Okay? Turn the paper around as necessary as you are comfortable with to make sure that your circle is covered with the color of the marker that you're planning to use. Now, in this case, and in this case we're using one color of the marker for now. We will be adding colors later. But for now, the whole composition we will be drawing using one marker at this point, at this stage in our, in our picture. Now, there are a lot of different ways to use colors in combination, to use colors within your graphic pictures. And I invite you to discover more. I discuss basics in my basics course. That's why it's called the basics. I discuss a lot of basic rules about drawing your graphic within my basics course. And I also offer the algorithm called uh, neurographic coloring. Neurocolor it's called now. I also call it neurohealing. I teach in that class how you can use different colors. And what do colors mean in neurographic? What does each color mean in neurographic picture? And what you can use to achieve the necessary results. So after you drew the first circle, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start. This is our circle. Circle is a mandala. Mandala is actually means a holy circle or a sacred circle. Um, and circle, I must tell you, is a really is a sacred element in many different religions, in many different, you know, spiritual practices. And um, having studied Kabbalistic um, background, I must tell you that. In Kabbalistic studies, circle is also very, very um, symbolic. It's very effective. It really is, well, the first thing, the world was created in the form of a circle. And the way the world was created was within the circle. And I think we can understand that. I must tell you that circle is one of the most, most basic and most um, integral element in the neurographic. And we discuss that more um, 
there are different reasons, but basically circle is the basic of life. And that's why when we draw a mandala, we always draw it in the form of a circle and we bring a lot of elements of the circle within the mandala. Now, the second algorithm that I'm going to teach you is called the neurotree. About two weeks ago, we had a whole um, workshop, a whole, it's called the International Day of Neurographic Trees or Neurotrees. And I was a part of that wonderful, wonderful, um, you know, workshop. And I must tell you that ever since then, I can't stop drawing neurotrees. They're truly amazing. The way we draw neurotrees, by the way, I want to give you an interesting insight. I am right now planning a great workshop consisting of a few classes on how to draw neurotrees in an effective way, and there are different ways of neurotrees. Um, that's in the works. Look for the annunciations. I will actually post it here in the group as well. Um, the way we draw neurotrees is that we start at the bottom, the roots. It's very important to note we start with the roots. We use the neural line, and then we'll go up and then go around. Did you see what happened? I made like an outline. Look what happens on the second side. It's the same thing. Using the neural line, I drew the roots, I drew the trunk, and now I'm going to the branches, right? What do you see now? You see an outline of the tree. This is not just a regular tree. This is a neuro tree. There's a difference between regular trees. If you see at the pictures of the regular trees and any other, you know, any any artist, the way it portrays, usually the tree is portrayed like this. We see the trunk and we see the branches and we often see the fruits. We rarely see the roots. In neurographic drawing, the roots, and you know that neurographic drawing is not just regular drawing. It's not just artistic drawing. It's much more than that. Neurographic drawing, neurographics is very much concerned itself with psychology, with metaphoric and associative um, distinction of what a picture represents, what an object represents. And when we draw a neurographic tree, follow me, see what's happening? I'm starting on the bottom, using a neurographic line, drawing and finishing on the top. Again, remember, bring in some branches. When we draw the neurographic tree, the neuro tree, we draw different lines and they all intersect. And sometimes they don't intersect and it's okay because I'm going to teach you an interesting trick on how to make sure that you still have intersections in your neuro tree, even though some of the lines are parallel. It's very important for us to have some intersection because intersection is what gives us the transformation. How? We start the process called rounding out. Rounding out is one of the, you know, it's not just one, it's the integral part of neurographic picture, of any neurographics picture. And whenever we draw a line and the line intersects with another line, we use something called curving out or rounding out. Honestly, there are many different terms you can use. I use curving out, I use rounding out. Honestly, anything to make you feel understanding and being able to carry out this important process that converts the edgy, the sharp intersections between two lines. I'm going to show it to you now. Right? When you draw two lines, there is a sharp intersection. In order to soften up the sharpness, we're going to bring, remember what I told you was the second integral part? The circle. Part of the circle, we're bringing like a part of the circle into our picture. Circle is what gives, it, metaphorically and associatively, circle is what gives comfort. See what happened? I want you to notice something. I'm going to do it again and notice something else. When I do an intersection here, Notice the difference. This is a fused, these are two fused lines, and this is two distinct separate lines. Every time I curve it out, I add, I round it out, I add, so to say, a piece of the circle 
of the metaphoric part of the circle to the intersection, look what happens. The two distinct lines that used to be before now became one whole thing. They're a wholeness. And that's a whole, one of the important psychological underlying things in neurographics. You're unifying. You're bringing wholeness, wholesomeness into your picture. You take different lines which represent who you are. There are different, so many beautiful different parts of who you are as a person. But once you unify it, it's a completely different picture. It's a completely different perception. There is that word, right? We all know things are not what they uh, are in their life, but things are what they appear to be to us. Perception is an important part of who we are in our life. And once you start changing the perception of something, whatever the topic, whatever your goal is, that's when that something will be changing in real life. And that's, I must tell you, has been, I must tell you that neurographics has been in research for the last few years. And neuroscientists have been doing research on people while they're drawing neurographics. They did EKG research. And I'm telling you, the results are absolutely astonishing. They're showing, they prove that the way a, a person's mind alters with the drawing of neurographics is amazing. It shows that there is more brain waves once a person starts drawing neurographics and during the process of drawing neurographics, your brain waves increase. And this kind of research are quite important and very, very interesting to people who have issues with attention span. It would be great actually for children and neurographics has been developed and have been using used used with children um, and it's amazing for children with ADHD and similar you know delays and neurographics is great for any person who wants to improve their focus their attention span who wants to improve the way they you know their the sharpness of their mind it's truly amazing I want to show you something interesting again remember we talked about the different lines I want to connect them it's very important to connect different lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and draw a line between one line and another like this, you see? Curve it out and look what happens. All of a sudden we have a connection. These are not two distinct lines now. They are neurographically connected. And if we remember the word neurographic has a part neuro in it, then we remember that this method is connected to neuroscience to the way neurons, to the way neurons work, to the way, to the way brain neurons work, and that's an important part. That's how we start understanding where the science part of this amazing, amazing technique comes in. It's a beautiful, interesting thing. So I'm connecting all the lines. Notice how I'm moving. I finished something in my roots, and I'm moving up. And we're going to do an interesting experimentive exploration of those two algorithms. As you notice, we made a mandala, a circle, and inside we made a tree. The neuro tree is symbolic of a human being, right? The roots rem remind you of the person, the trunk is the body, and the branches remind you of the hands. It's let me see if you guys can connect to it. Remember when I first heard it, to me, a very distinctive image came to my mind. Remember the person by Leonardo da Ca Leonardo, I want to say Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, the person, the spread out person. Guys, I'm sure you remember that, right? It's amazing. That's exactly what a, a neuro tree is. It's a metaphoric association with the way a person is, a human being grows human being is a is a being that needs to grow and the same thing we can say of the tree the tree needs to grow and in order to grow the tree needs what needs resources such as we know right from botanics class in um, elementary or middle school the tree needs soil 
the tree needs water, nutrients, right? Water sometimes goes on top in the form of the rain. And I'm going to tell you something that farmers would tell you. The tree or any plant would need love, right? When a farmer lovingly takes care of its trees, the tree starts growing in a different way. And we know the same thing of a human being, right? We all know kids and adults too, by the way. We all need love, right? Love is all we need, the famous song. That's exactly what it is. When we draw the tree of our project, whatever your goal is that you set, whatever your project is, whenever you draw, give it love and care. And you can talk to it. You can say, oh, this is so beautiful. You can give it the constant care and connection that it requires. After all, this is not a regular tree. It's your tree. This tree is symbolic of who you are. And that's the beauty of it. Now, notice, I drew my tree. I have the trunk. I mean, I have the roots, the trunk, and the branches, right? Uh, actually, I want to extend my branches. I realize that. And you can do that. Once you draw, you can add more if you need it, right? Like, I feel like I want to add more branches like this. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Connect it. Voila. What do you think? Now, once I draw this, I'm looking at my tree and I'm like, you know what? This tree, and this is the realization. Now, I want to tell you a little secret. There is a reason why I'm drawing on this side of the paper. Because this is the side that fits into my camera. What you can do, and a lot of people do that. When they draw a neuro tree, they take, they would draw the, you know, they would draw it on a regular piece of paper, the regular size, and then put it on a bigger size and expand it. Now, you can do the same thing with a mandala tree. Make a mandala that's bigger, draw the bigger tree, and then expand it into a bigger size of the paper. I'm doing this for illustrative purposes, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. You're welcome to experiment with sizes. That's actually absolutely magnificent. Make a bigger size. You're going to see how expanded you will be in your drawing, in the way you're feeling. Now, once I finish with my tree here, I'm looking at my tree and I'm like, you know what? I feel like I need to expand. I feel like this little circle, which is who I am, this is my world. The circle is my world, right? This new mandala is this representative, symbolic of my planet, so to say, my world. I'm ready to go beyond this world. I'm ready to expand. I feel like I need to grow. My tree needs to grow further. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my circular. I'm going to go back in the middle here. Right? I'm going to expand. Voila. Right? What I'm going to do is, again... I'm going to outline that circle that I drew so you can see it clearly. And I can see it clearly. Look at this. I am expanding my world literally, right? Remember, in neurographics, whatever you draw is symbolic of what's happening with you, right? I'm expanding my world. I'm drawing a bigger circle. And on a psychological level, I'm expanding my world. I'm ex expanding my world to include that new goal that I'm going, that I'm drawing for, right? Whatever the resource you're looking for, whatever the goal is. Look what happened. I made a bigger mandala, a bigger world. My planet is much bigger. And you know what? Now I have room to grow. And I'm expanding myself. And it's very important to notice how we're doing it stage by stage. but Because it gives us more room. It gives us an ability to figure out who are we at this level. And where do we want to go in the next level? And again, what happens here, the way you grow, there are two ways to go. We can grow by drawing, extending our branches. And we can grow by extending our roots. Whichever way you decide to go, you're welcome to do it. Look at your picture, look at your bigger world and say, this is so interesting. I want to grow further and start growing yourself. And you start growing branch by branch, exactly how we started the neuro tree. That's how we 
expand ourselves. Okay. This is a very interesting technique. When I use it within the coaching session, it's really powerful. I even use it within, within my group sections. I lead group sessions um, offline, live, on Wednesday mornings. And when I recently introduced this, um, this technique, my students were like truly amazed by how powerful it is because you can just, you know, one thing is to grow, but another thing is to, to allow yourself to grow in stages, to allow yourself to peek in into the future before you actually start growing in. And that's truly um, amazing. Look at this. I'm expanding my roots first because I feel like I want to expand my roots first. And once I start expanding my roots, I feel, then I feel the necessity and I feel like the confidence to start going up. Go, go by this line that you already drew. Going up and expanding the branches. And this is beautiful. I must tell you that when you start drawing like this, it's truly invigorating. It gives you a different view on different perception. There's that word again, perception on your reality. You start viewing things different. You start thinking, hmm, what if I should go this way and that way? You know, it's like trying out things, you know, like when you try out clothes, right? In the store before you buy it. You don't want to be surprised by coming home and discovering that this piece of clothes is not fitting you the way you want it to look. Same thing here. You're fitting out your new reality. Whatever goal you're trying to find, you're fitting out like this. You start figuring out and saying, you know, this is the way I want to go. And whatever the topic is, you start expanding on that topic. You start thinking different ways that goal could come to real life. It's a very interesting way to drawing. And I must tell you, even if you don't want to draw it with a, like, you know, within a coaching way, you can just draw it for meditative purpose. And neurotree are amazing for any growth you're looking for, whatever the sphere you're looking for, whether it's relationship, career, money, you know, business, anything you want within yourself you know self-discovery self-awareness neurotry is amazing in that way once you start drawing like this you can discover so many things about yourself you will feel yourself on the inside expanding and as usually while you are drawing and curving out rounding out all the intersection it's very important to breathe in and breathe out Allow the processes within yourself to transform. And breathing in and bre breathing in and out, deep breathing in and out, is what allows those processes to take place and kind of to stabilize inside yourself. That's an important part. Very important to notice that. Very important to realize that. Look what's happening, right? I'm going back to my roots. Again, you notice how I'm drawing them mostly parallel? That's okay. When I finish drawing them, I will um, go back and connect them together like this. You see? Same way I showed you in the smaller tree. Same thing would happen here. Look how beautiful it is. While you're drawing your new tree, focus on what do you feel? Breathing in and breathing out. Focus on your body. What is your body telling you? Is it telling you about the specific body part? Is it telling you to focus on something? A lot of times when I teach this in group sections, um, my students come up afterwards and they tell me, you know, I didn't want to focus on anything. I just wanted to just meditate and just draw. And I said, that's wonderful. That works too. And that's okay. If you have a private section with a neurographic coach, um, most of us instructors here are certified coaches as well, um, including myself. You're welcome to contact me for any coaching needs. And during the coaching, we do pay attention to how you feel, how you think, what are your 
emotions, what is the body part that comes to your mind? But sometimes you just want to relax and you can just meditate. And I must tell you that even if you don't focus on different parts of who you are, but just draw and be in the process of drawing, it will help you. It will help you in the same way. It will help you expand yourself. It will help you go beyond of who you are now. And that's what we're looking for. Whenever we do any of those therapeutic art modules, that's exactly what we do, right? We're looking for a therapeutic way to increase awareness of whatever it is you're looking for. Whether it's decrease something in your life, something unpleasant, or increase something that we want to look for, right? Some kind of goal, some kind of um, quest, something you're looking for to achieve. And Neurographica is great for that. Look what happens with us, right? We're drawing more. I must tell you that I have 45 to 55 minutes loaded for the session. While this kind of drawing, when I draw by myself, takes much longer as I personally also like to do it in a meditative state where I sit down and I carefully draw each of my line and that's how it's supposed to be. Your neurographic line is supposed to be very meditatively done. It's supposed to be done in a way where you feel the line. You see where it goes. And that's very, very significant. That's very therapeutic, I must tell you. It's what gives you that part of meditative state that you go in when you draw neurographics. It's truly, truly amazing. Look what happens here. Neurographic. Beautiful. I must tell you the tree, it's interesting to draw the tree and see how your perception changes when you want to draw it for a specific project that requires growing. Whether it's business, whether it's personal life, you know. Um, I have people, I have a friend who drew and she got married after that. She met the, you know, the man of her dreams, so to say. And she got married and, you know, that was a topic for her drawing. Whatever you're looking for, once you start drawing neurographics, you start bringing in different results, you know, more concrete results into your life. And that's the beauty of it. That's the best part that, you know, it's not just therapeutic art. But it also gives you a result. I invite you to find out more wonderful algorithms, very effective, that teach you and will give you step-by-step -step instructions how to draw it. You're welcome to contact me. I can give you a course into any algorithm. And it's truly amazing. First and foremost, of course, I suggest you take the basic course that will teach you the most basic rules on how to draw the neural line, how to connect, how to um, do correct rounding out so that your picture is actually effective and many, many more details. And after that, you're free, free to explore other algorithms that we so conveniently offer in our school. And it's absolutely amazing. Look how carefully I take each line and I connect them. I want to make sure my roots are connected. And it's interesting that when we talk about roots, when we draw the neuro tree, it's metaphoric for different parts of your life, right? So the roots is a uh, symbolic, significant of your past. The trunk, the trunk is significant for your present. And the branches are significant for your future, right? That's why we draw fruits in our future, right? Because these are the fruits that we're looking to achieve. Fruits that we're trying to grow so we can taste them and enjoy them. Look what happens. You see what happens? Once the roots are connected, there's a completely different perception of the way we see our tree. But once, when they're not connected, it's like as if there is a hole. And if you ask any farmer, they will tell you, that a healthy tree has healthy roots and the roots have to be connected. Healthy roots are roots that are branching out in all different positions, right? Not just distinct on its own. 
And it's also um, metaphoric for socialization, right? A human being does not live on its own. Even if we take a person who lives, let's say, in the forest or in the farm by itself, it's still not a alone, right? It has trees, it has animals it connects to. Human being by nature is a social um, creation. Right? Look at this. Now, I want to tell you something very interesting. Right? So I connected all my roots and all my branches. And I'm looking at my tree. And it looks so beautiful. I must tell you right away, I will be expanding my mandala to make it bigger. Because now that I do this tree, I feel like, oh my God, I filled up my current world with a tree and I want to grow more and you can take do it two ways you can stop here and color in your tree and add the resources resources we add in form of the circles or you can do what I do if you feel that this tree is still small enough for you and you want to expand further then that's exactly what you do allow yourself to expand further and that's what I'm going to do look at this taking my circular and you know what's happening you can guess it I'm making a bigger circle on some sides of my paper it will go beyond my paper and that's okay that's absolutely fine right I have to find that dot where I started my circle okay and look what happens here okay mm -hmm very careful sometimes that happens with a circular it kind of gets off and that's okay I'm just drawing it again okay I'm going to do the same thing I did before I'm going to take my marker and go right by the circle that I drew with my pencil do you see what's happening and this way I'm expanding my world and I'm saying you know what I love this world, the small world, but I feel like I want to expand. I feel like I want to grow bigger. I feel like I want to expand beyond what the current life is offering me. And again, like I said, this is a therapeutic, psychological technique. And this is perfect to do on your own. Or you can do it with a coach, with a certified neurographics coach like myself. And we have some other instructors here in the school. You're welcome to contact and it's an amazing coaching technique. I have clients who come out of this session completely invigorated and full of strengths and full of resources on being able to tackle their new projects. And it's amazing. Okay. Okay. And the same technique we're carrying over, okay? We're expanding further. You're welcome to do it. Look what happens. I have a little line that came out, and I'm just going to neurograph it. That's okay. That's the beauty of neurographic picture. You can neurograph any line that seems to be out of the way or drawn not in the right way, and that's okay. Okay. So, expanding the tree. Now, I have about 10 more minutes to draw. So, I want to tell you, Right before we start ex extending, I want to tell you what we can do more. We can, I'm going to leave this picture for now like this. I will be expanding later on. Why? Because I want to show you what else you can do with your tree the way it is. First, you can add resources. The resources go on the bottom. The bottom resources in the roots are resources that you're looking for to rely on to reach the resources that you need in the future. Okay? The future resources are the fruits. What are the fruits you're looking for? What are you trying to achieve? You put your goals on top. But in order to achieve, in order to set a goal, the first thing you need to do is you need to set a resource for your goal. Okay, let's say your goal is um, to go on a cruise or go on the vacation. What would be your resource for going on vacation? different ways right one would be money for example and that's exactly what you do you draw a circle on the bottom for let's say money right you need money to go on vacation that's a good uh, resource right a very necessary resource where else would you need to go on a vacation you need time right time would be a different circle that we draw 
and that would be the next resource. You see what I'm doing? I am looking for the resource. Before I put my goal on top, I'm figuring out what do I have to reach my goal. And in order to do that, I set my resources and now I'm saying, you know what, I have the money, I have the time, now I can set my vacation, right? In your vacation, you draw a resource, a fruit, so to say, a goal over here on top. Got it? On the bottom, resources. On top, we have fruits. Fruits of our labor, so to say, right? But over here, we say fruits of what we're looking for. And again, every time you add an element to your neurographic picture, it's important to curve it out carefully. Allow yourself to transform yourself within by curving out. Now, the next thing you do once you add the resources, you can add some coloring. Mind you, there are different ways you can color. You can use highlighters to color. Okay? You can use um, pencils to color. Uh, my new way, the late things I've been using is um, oil pastels. I found this great um, company that makes metallic oil pastels. I love them. They really bring out the color and they go really nicely. So what I would do is, let's say, I would think what color do I want the resources to be? And let's say I want it to be blue. Blue come to my mind. That's what I'm going to do. I'm coloring my resources on the bottom blue. Right? Right? And I'm going up to my goal and I'm making it blue as well. Now, you can mix different colors. That's not set in stone, by the way. Again, in the basics course, you can learn what can be varied in your graphics and what's important to follow through. Like what we discussed, the curving out is a must. It's a rule. You must do it. But like mixing in different colors and the way to do it is something you can learn. And again, I invite you to join me for a basics course. I'm offering it and it's absolutely amazing. Um, and you can learn more. Again, now I'm going to add more resources. Do you see what's happening? You can also, by the way, you can start adding resources and then say, oh, I need to expand and expand further on. There are different stages at which you can do this. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm making a whole workshop on neurographic trees, on neuro trees, where I will be expect explaining all of these stages, all of these rules. Over here, honestly, like it's only 45 minutes to 55 minute sessions. And I'm just giving you a glimpse into this amazing, amazing uh, technique that you can start taking, maybe start drawing, and then see if it interests you more, you're welcome to join me. Um, join me on my page, Lana Shalom. Uh, I have a personal profile. I have a page called Manga Magic of Neurographic Art with the same name of mine, Lana Shalom. You're welcome to join. I'm on Instagram. Join me, look around, browse through. Um, I have YouTube channel where you can see my videos and see if something is interesting more to you, something you want to explore more. And again, take a different uh, goal you want to reach, let's say, and you're drawing your resources on the bottom. In order to reach the goal, you need to set yourself some resources. You know, setting a goal that has no backing is least to say is not very practical allow yourself to find a way to reach your goal okay again you see how I made a resource for my goal now I'm going and I'm making a goal on top I'm not giving you any specifics at this point I'm just telling you the graphical way to do things okay and we have a few more minutes if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask me now. You're welcome to write me um, a personal message after a finish. It's your choice. Um, you're welcome to post your beautiful pictures of everything you drew during today's conference in our conference page, in this group, specific group, and we'll be very happy to see, and we'll be very glad to see all of your pictures. And again, 
We thank you for coming and joining us for the conference today. Um, this is the color that's going to be purple in my picture. I'm just letting you know. Right? I like to do this like this. My resource is a color purple. And my goal is a color purple. Look what happens. Do you notice how the circles, the resources, and the goal just come alive in the picture? Look how beautiful they look, right? I want to thank you for joining me today. I want to thank you for joining us for the whole conference today. Whether you came for just one session or you came for all the sessions, we all are very, very glad to see you. We're very glad you drew with us today. We're happy to have you here in our School Neographic Americas. I'm not going to switch because I told you my camera switching software doesn't work. But I will say goodbye to you today. And again, it's not goodbye. It's actually the beginning. This is a glimpse into the neurographic world. Please join us for more sessions, for more courses, more classes. We teach online, online classes and offline classes. I have both. I live in New York City. You're welcome to join me. You're welcome to write to me. I actually often travel all around U.S. I go to Europe often. You're welcome to write to me again. I'll be happy to come to you to lead a workshop, anything you want. We love we would love to help you discover neurographics. One more thing I want to show you. After I drew my tree, and it's so much bigger, I'm looking at my tree now and I'm wondering, I'm thinking, you know, this trunk is too narrow. I want to expand it. And that's another tool I wanted to show you. This is what you can do. You can just expand the trunk of the tree. Look what happens. Drawing like this, look what happens. Voila. How do you like this? I am adding the lines, right? Look what happened. The trunk became bigger. Now my tree looks more strong, right? Like it it gives it has more like substantial entity to it in order to get bigger, be bigger, and I feel like yeah, I definitely can add more branches and more roots to it and I can expand it further. And that's the beauty of it. Voila. Thank you for joining me. I thank you for coming and exploring this beautiful technique with me. More questions, please write. And enjoy the rest of your evening today.